This is part 33 of WCF video series. In this video, we'll discuss one-way message exchange pattern in WCF. This is continuation to part 32, so please watch part 32 before proceeding. In a request reply pattern, the client sends a message to the WCF service and then waits for the reply message even if the service operations return type is void. In case of one-way operation, only one message is exchanged between the client and the service. The client makes a call to the service method but does not wait for a response message. So in short, the receiver of the message does not send a reply message nor does the sender of the message expects one. And to make an operation one way, all we do is we set this is one way parameter to true. Let's look at an example. Now we'll be working with the same example that we worked with in the previous session. So here we've got a service contract and these two operations, um, you know, follow request reply message exchange pattern. Now to speed things up, here within the notepad I have two operation contracts that are one way. So let's paste them here. So one way operation, one way operation which is going to throw an exception. Now let's flip to the service implementation file and then implement both of those operation contracts and to do that simply click on the service and then you'll get an option to implement interface i sample service. So the stubs to implement those operations should be generated. So in one way operation what are we going to do? We are simply going to make the thread sleep for two seconds and then we'll return the control after that. And what is this one-way operation going to do? It's going to throw a not implemented exception. So straightforward implementation there. Let's go ahead and run the host. So the host is running. Now let's flip to the Windows client application and let's update first the service reference so that the new operation contracts will become available for the client. And then if you look at the Windows form, I have already placed two buttons here, one-way operation and one-way operation throws exception. So basically this is going to call our one-way operation and this is going to call the other operation which is going to throw the exception. So let's double click on the button to generate the click even handler. And to speed things up, I have the client code here. So let me copy and paste that within this button click even handler. So what are we doing here? It's again straightforward. So we are adding you know this string saying one way operation started at the date and time at which the operation has started to the list box. And then we are invoking the one way operation. And then we are again appending this string one way operation completed uh, to the list box and then finally an empty string. So straightforward implementation there. And let's do one more thing here. You know, just before we invoke the one-way operation, let's actually disable the button. Button one-way operation dot enabled equals false. And then immediately we will enable it. Okay. All right. And similarly, let's click on the other click event uh, button control to generate the click event handler and then copy and paste this client code. Again, this is straightforward code, very much similar to um, you know the code that we have in this click event handler. And all we are doing here is you know we are invoking the one way operation that's going to throw an exception. Okay? Cool. So let's go ahead and run the client application. Now if you recollect from the previous session, you know, in a request reply pattern, what's going to happen? The client makes a call to the service and then the client is blocked or the client is waiting for the response to come back from the service. Okay, so makes a call and waits for a response. So there is a request and reply. So that's why when we click this button, look at that, it's disabled and blocked until a response is sent back. Okay, and again, if there, if at all, if there is an exception in request reply message exchange pattern, that exception gets reported right away. Okay, and if the server, if the communication channel is faulted, you know, we get that error again right away saying that the communication object is in faulted state because you know the messages are exchanged in both directions so there's a request and a reply 
Now let's look at one-way operation. Let's run this Windows client once more. And then look at this. When we click one-way operation, what's going to happen? It's going to call that one-way operation. So here between the client and the WCF service, there's only one message exchange. So the client is going to send the message to the WCF service. Okay. And then you know the client will simply continue processing. So what happens when we invoke that one-way operation? You know, the call is going to get to the WCF service. And then if the WCF service is busy processing other requests, that call will get queued at the WCF service, waiting for it to be processed. In the meantime, as soon as that call gets queued at the WCF service, the client is unblocked and it can continue processing with whatever it has been doing. So the client is not blocked in a one-way operation. It simply fires the operation. Once the operation is queued, you know the client can continue um, doing whatever it has been doing before. Okay. So look at this. That's why when we click this button, look at that one-way operation started. There's really no time difference. Let's click it once again. Look at that. You know, 23 seconds and 23 seconds. It's happening at the same time. But if you look at the one-way operation itself. You know that one way operation should at least take within our WCF service the one way operation should at least take two seconds. But if you look at our client here, look at that, it says started at 1651.43 and completed also at the same time. And notice that the button is not being disabled at all, even for um, a second. That's basically because once the call gets to the WCF service, you know, the client is relieved in one-way operation because it's not waiting for a response message to come back. So obviously that has got an implication as well, meaning if at all if there are SOAP faults, you know, while processing the request, those doesn't get reported to the client. Okay? So the WCF service calls an operation, you know, and forgets about it. If if there are errors, you know, SOAP faults processing that request, you know, that doesn't get reported to the client. And if at all if there is an unhandled exception and if the server channel is faulted, you know, that again doesn't get uh, reported back to the client. The client doesn't know about it until after another call. You know, on the subsequent call, you know, it finds out that the server channel is faulted and at which point the client channel also gets faulted. And obviously, you know, the same instance of the proxy class will become useless. Let's actually look at that in action. So let's clear all these messages. Let's you know, invoke this one. One way operation throws exception. If you look at the implementation of that method, what is it doing? It's simply throwing an exception. So once we click this button, look at that. It doesn't say anything about the exception. It says that, you know, it started and completed because it has sent a message to invoke that method and that's it. It's done. Okay? And then obviously at the WCF service there is an exception. So when there is an exception, um, and obviously this is an unhandled exception. So, and we are using TCP protocol. So what's going to happen because of sessions are involved there? So the server channel is going to get faulted, and the client is not aware of that. Okay. So when we click this button again, one-way operation throws exception. Look at that. We get a message. But that says the socket connection was aborted because the server channel is faulted and the client is not aware of that. Okay. Um, so now what happens? You know, as a result of this, the client channel will be faulted at this time. And then if you click this button, look at that, we get that error. The communication object cannot be used for communication because it's in faulted state. Okay. So the faults doesn't get reported straight away. And in a similar fashion, if the server channel is faulted, you know, we don't get to know about it until, you know, until we make another call. Okay? So those are the implications. And obviously, if the operation has to be one way, uh, you know, the return type has to be void. And you cannot use any output parameters or reference parameters. Okay? Because, you know, it's a one way operation. So the method is not going to return anything. And in a similar fashion, you cannot initialize output variables or reference variables because, you know, output parameters basically um, they are used to return something to the caller. But here, the caller is not expecting anything. It has to be a one way operation. That's why um, we cannot include return types, reference parameters, or output parameters. Okay? And what's going to happen if you do that? Obviously, um, let's actually look at that. Let's close the service host that's running. Let's specify a return type here. 
So since we are specifying a return type, let's actually return a string. Within the implementation, we are specifying the return type. So that should match you know, the return type within the service contract. So let's say that is string as well. Now let's actually run this and see what's going to happen. We will get an exception. Look at that. When it's trying to host, um, you know, we get an exception. And what is it saying? Invalid operation exception. And operations marked with is one way equals true must not declare output parameters, reference parameters, or return values. And that makes sense. All right. Now let's look at the concepts that are involved with this require. I mean, uh, one-way operations. So as messages are exchanged only in one way, false doesn't get reported straight away to the client. And clients are unaware of the server channel false until a subsequent call is made. An exception will be thrown if operations marked with is one way equals true declares output parameters, reference parameters, or return values. And are these one-way calls same as asynchronous calls? You know, they appear to be, but really, they're not asynchronous calls. When a one-way call is received at the service, and if the service is busy serving other requests, then what happens? That call gets queued, and the client is unblocked, and the client can continue uh, executing with, you know, whatever it has been doing. Okay, but you know, behind the scenes, the WCF service is going to process them. But then keep in mind, one-way calls can still block the client if the number of messages waiting to be processed has exceeded the server queue limit. So, you know, if we keep on clicking uh, this button, one-way operation, you know, at the moment it's in faulted state, but if we keep on clicking it, what's going to happen? You know, we're going to send messages to invoke that one-way operation. So all of them are going to get queued at the WCF service. Now, we can configure the WCF service to specify the queue length. Okay, so let's say if we set the queue length to, for example, 10, and if we are trying to queue another message, what's going to happen? That will not get queued, and at that point, the client is blocked. Okay, so these one-way operations are not asynchronous calls. They just give an appearance to be asynchronous, but they're not. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.